Timo Meyer is back for eight more seasons. And how will he be utilized going forward? Well, we're going to hear directly from Timo Meyer and general manager Tom Fitzgerald. And I'm going to also share you guys my thoughts as to how Meyer fit in this past season and how he can continue to fit in going forward. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodora's got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play by play announcer. Dell's right for Pucks and Pitchforks and also part-time credential media member Trey Matthews. As promised, this is my full-fledged episode in regard to the Timo Meyer extension. I was able to attend both Meyer and Tom Fitzgerald's recent media availability, so I'm going to play some sound bites throughout the course of the episode. In segment one, we're going to go over some background information, courtesy of the Devils PR team. I'm going to give you guys my initial thoughts to the contract in terms of its length and also financial situation. And then in segment two, we're going to talk about how I hope to see Timo Meyer be utilized going forward because some people have mixed opinions as to how productive Meyer was or how not productive he was. If you guys don't know already, I think Timo Meyer did a great job, but we're going to discuss that even more in segment two. And then in segment three, we're going to talk about the Devils' lineup in general because Tom Fitzgerald, during one of his recent press conferences, said despite the Devils having a lot of capable players that can play on the top six, he says that they want to spread it out just a little bit more because they don't not only just want to have a dominant top six throughout the NHL, they want to have a dominant lineup in general. So I found that quite interesting, so we're going to talk about that in the third and final segment, but courtesy of the Devils PR team, here's the background information in regard to the Timo Meyer extension. So a few days ago, the team agreed to terms with restricted free agent winger Timo Meyer on an eight-year contract worth $70.4 million with an annual average value of $8.8 million. Fitzgerald was quoted to say, we were excited to acquire Timo at the deadline, but it's an even greater feeling knowing that he'll be here for the next eight seasons. Timo's unique blend of style of play, Goal scoring ability and physical presence will prove valuable for us. In talking with them, Timo realized that I always believe that this is the right place for him as a player and a person. We've locked up another piece for our young core that is looking to take the next step together for great success. So here are my thoughts on Timo Meyer's extension. So the first being is that this whole offseason for the Devils has been drama free and Tom Fitzgerald has been making the correct move. So some of the moves that he's made so far is that he's gotten rid of Damon Searson. He got rid of Mackenzie Blackwood. He was able to re-sign Jesper Bratt, Timo Meyer, Eric Halla. And not only that, he was able to make a big trade in which he was able to get Tyler Toffoli from the Calgary Flames, and he didn't have to give up that much in return. So Tom Fitzgerald, whether or not he does something for the rest of the offseason, because free agency will begin on July 1st, but Cheryl get, already gets an A-plus in my eyes because he's done the necessary things to shapeshift this roster come next season. And once again, we're not even out of the month of June. So Fitzgerald really got to work and he was able to keep some of the core pieces for the Devils together for a long period of time. He was able to add some more firepower to the already stacked Devils roster and he was able to retain an, a valuable depth piece and he got rid of some of the longer tenured players that unfortunately weren't going to be given bigger roles or their contract situations just didn't play into the favor of the Devils, i.e. being Mackenzie Blackwood and Damon Severson. And will Fitzgerald make another big move before July 1st hits? That's yet to be seen. He has a few hours to do so. But nonetheless, this offseason, drama-free for Fitzgerald and company. They have done a phenomenal job of building upon a already competitive roster that the Devils had. And now they're looking to surpass expectations come next year it's going to be hard to do so because this past season for devils has already been so historic they were able to break the franchise record for most wins in a single season they were able to win their first playoff series since 2012 but they have their eyes set on the stanley cup final and like i've been saying the last few episodes the devils they're well on their way to possibly getting there but trying to formulate the team and just trying to make sure that 
all the pieces are in play and no drama occurs within the organization. Great job by Fitzgerald. And let's talk about the contract for Meyer in general. So let's look at the money situation because he's annually going to be paid $8.8 million. So he does surpass the Jack Hughes threshold, which is $8 million annually. And that was to be expected. I'm okay with it. I actually like it because NHL Network just a few weeks ago, they were projecting saying that Timo Meyer could get paid anywhere from $9 million to $10.5 million, whatever the case might be. But keep in mind, Dougie Hamilton is the most paid player on the roster annually because he's being paid annually $9 million. And I think we all have to accept the fact that Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer, they are severely underpaid because like I've alluded to in a previous episode, if Jack Hughes had the season that he had and he was due for a contract extension, I guarantee you he'd be worth at least $10 million because a player of his caliber doesn't come around that often. And once again, he was able to break Patrick Eliash's single season points record. And he is just in his early 20s. He has so much room to grow. He has so much room to improve. He hasn't reached his prime yet. So Jack Hughes and Nico Keisher, they're just severely underpaid. So surpassing that Hughes threshold, as I like to call it, I'm okay with it for Meyer's sake. And I've talked about it in the previous episode before. I expected for that to happen. I was okay with it because last offseason, if you guys recall, this is an example that I, that I like to use. The Devils were willing to add someone like Johnny Goodrow onto the roster. They were willing to add someone like Matthew Kachuk onto the roster. Hypothetically, if one of those players was on the roster for the time being, they would have been paid annually more than Jack Hughes. So Timo Meyer and a player of his caliber doesn't come around too often either. And he did sort of take a pay cut because Kevin Weeks reported the fact that the San Jose Sharks did in fact offer Timo Meyer $9 million plus annually but Meyer turned it down, and when the Sharks realized that Meyer wasn't going to resign long-term, they dealt him away. So Meyer said in his press conference that the money wasn't so much of an issue. He wanted to be a part of the organization, and I called that. I said if Timo Meyer wanted to get paid, he'd go elsewhere because the Sharks would be willing to pay him uh, a lot more money compared to the Devils. I, I get it. it I, I don't know the exact number, but it still would have been more than a Devils, and even if it's not the Sharks, there are a bunch of other teams that be willing to break the bank for Timo Meyer because he's able to do well on special teams. He is a physical guy. He's a big power forward. He's still really young. And I think a lot of teams would like to add someone like that to the repertoire. And the Devils should be very lucky that Meyer was willing to take just a slight pay cut in order to remain with the organization because I think the name of the game for Meyer was that he wants to win. And that's what I said in prior episodes, which is Meyer wants to get paid, he'll go somewhere else. But if he wants to win and be a part of something special, he'll remain with the Devils organization. And it's the same pep talk that I sort of gave Jesper Bratt, which is if you want to win, remain here. Because the Devils are forming something special here in Newark. And I think a lot of players want to be a part of that. So just some food for thought in, in regard to the money, because I don't know how you guys feel about the annual salary. I like it. I know some people might be uh, iffy about it. Some people might have mixed emotions. But if it if it makes you feel any better, Meyer was going to be offered more annually by the Sharks. And he ultimately just decided to settle with New Jersey. Now, when talking about the length, because it's an eight-year extension, it's perfect because the Devils now have Jesper Bratt signed long-term. They have Jack Hughes signed long-term. They got Nico Keisher signed long-term. They got Dougie Hamilton signed long-term. And now they got Timo signed long-term. So the core pieces for the Devils are here to stay for a long period of time. And whatever happens with the other depth pieces down the road, at least the Devils can sleep well at night knowing that they got some crucial guys on their roster that a lot of teams would kill for. Because Dougie Hamilton, he was a Norris Trophy finalist not too long ago. Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer, they are budding superstars. Timo Meyer is a interesting case. He is a player that brings a lot to the table, like I just mentioned. And obviously you got Andre Palat. He signed long term. People think he's overpaid. And quite honestly, I would I would agree in that case because he's an overpaid bomb six player. But I don't want to take away from the fact that Palat has won a couple Stanley Cups. So he knows what it takes to get to that position. And I think a lot of teams, once again, would love to have someone like Andre Palat onto the roster because he's a Milford player, pretty solid. But 
the name of the game for Devils is that they got their main pieces signed long term. And also Jesper Brett, I forgot to mention him, very consistent the last couple seasons in terms of the point production. So this was a great deal for Tom Fitzgerald. He didn't overpay Timo Meyer. He got in, into the ballpark that I was expecting. And the length fits Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, uh, Dougie Hamilton, Jesper Bratt. Basically, the core is here to stay for a long period of time for the Devils. And I think fans should be very excited about it. Now, I'm going to talk about how I hope Timo Meyer is utilized in the future. And I'm also going to play some sound bites momentarily. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about AG1 because I drink AG1 in the morning before working out and before recording a podcast because my body is a temple. I got to start treating as such. I want to be happier. I want to be healthier. My sleep cycle, especially these last few days, has been really messed up. And AG1 has really helped me. So what is the stuff? Well, AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. Science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source super nutrients. AG1 is raising the standard for quality in supplement category. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first. So AG1 is just great. If, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from a supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out. Okay, before I get my thoughts as to how I want Timo Meyer to be utilized going forward on the Devils roster, I had the chance to attend his press conference and ask him, how does he hope to be utilized going forward? Because I asked him the similar question at exit interviews, but I wanted to see where his headspace is at, knowing that he is going to be returning for the next several years. Here's what he told me. I asked you this at exit interviews, but I wanted to see if your thought process has changed. After the trade, the scoring numbers went down a little, but the aggressive physical showing was still on full display. How well do you think you were utilized this past season, and how would you like to be utilized going forward now that you're locked up long term? Yeah, I mean, I'm a player that's um, – I like to score goals. Um, I mean, that's that's no secret. But, uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, yeah, you got to be more physical. And, and I think I'm a guy that can contribute in, in, in different ways, um, offensively, but also, you know, defensively, physically, and, and try to have an impact in, in different different ways into the game. So, yeah, for me, it's uh, it's going to be great coming in uh, into training camp and obviously um, show the coaching staff right from the start I'm ready, um, yeah, to take the next step personally but also as a team and uh, fully committed to that and it all starts now with the way you work in the summer I also asked Tom Fitzgerald the same question because I wanted to get a different perspective on it I wanted to see how basically the head of it all was satisfied with Myers production here's what he had to say as well when Timo was first acquired the scoring numbers did go down however his physicality was on full display how well do you think Timo was utilized uh, this past year Again, I, I go back to adjustment time. Um, it takes time. I've said this over and over again. You make a judgment. You, you, you pass judgment on your team probably around the 20-game mark. might be the 25-game mark, but where things are starting to click. Guys are knowing their system, you know. Um, he didn't have that luxury. He didn't. But we did see him get better and better and better. He is a physical specialist. You know, he, he, he's physical, he gets the net, he's heavy on pucks. We all know he can shoot the puck. Um, I just think having having time now spent with us and then moving forward, uh, he's only going to get better as, as a player, more comfortable. And I said this moments ago, like, we're looking to build the best top nine in the league with a fourth line that really isn't a fourth line but can play against other teams' top lines and give Nico a rest. Um, and we we're, we're getting there. Um, so, uh, with Timo, it's like, how do we, how do we exploit matchups? You know, well, you have the three lines deep offensively and, and, and have mismatches on, on, uh, in-game mismatches. So, um, I think, uh, I think Timo came in, I think what we saw towards the end, how he was continuing to elevate his game was exactly what we uh, traded for. 
So here's my thing for Timo Meyer, And courtesy of the Devils PR team, they were able to share some interesting stats. So Meyer uh, earned 14 points, nine goals, five assists in 21 regular season games with the New Jersey Devils and registered a career high 40 goals. And almost half of his goals came on the man advantage because he finished the season with 17 power play goals. And Meyer's 17 power play goals were tied for eighth, most in the NHL this season and was one of 19 NHL players who earned 40 or more goals. Additionally, Meyer recorded a career-high 323 shots on goal, which was tied for sixth most in the league. Meyer made his Devils debut on March 5th, and he had 42 hits since that time, and he ranked first on New Jersey's roster. So there you go. Meyer is very useful on the man advantage. He's able to get even strength goals. He's very physical. So here's how I want Timo Meyer to be utilized going forward. I think he can definitely be a solid addition on Jack Hughes's line. And we saw this in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs when the Devils were taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. What was missing from the Devils standpoint? A lot of things, but I think one of the key aspects was that the Hurricanes were forechecking the hell out of the Devils. And the Devils just couldn't match their physicality. And we saw this in game one, especially in the first period, when the Devils only registered one shot on goal. But then come game two, when Timo Meyer returns to action after he was recovering from a nose injury that he sustained from Jacob Truba, the physicality, while it didn't change the outcome of the game, it certainly helped the Devils in more ways than one because they were able to register more shots on goal in period one. So the thing I want Timo Meyer to do going forward is that he needs to be the third goal score for the Devils. So first priority is obviously Jack Hughes. Then second priority, I want him to score more goals. Obviously, he's a playmaker and he's a very selfless player, but Nico Heischer has to be number two. And then number three, Timo needs to surpass Jesper Bratt as third man in line when it comes to finding the back of the net for this Devils roster because he's capable of doing it and he was able to help the Devils power play in more ways than one. And I'll talk about that momentarily. But when the goal scoring is not there for Timo, what else is he doing? He's being physical. He's getting the hits. He's getting into his opponent's heads. And I've talked about this plenty in previous episodes, but we saw this in round one of the playoffs against the New York Rangers because Meyer didn't register a single point, but he was able to get a lot of hits. He was, a, he was able to be very physical. He got into the head of Igor Shesterkin. There was an article written about that. So my thing for Timo Meyer is that he could be the epitome on this Devils roster for when things aren't going well. What's plan B? Because I think the Devils can learn a thing or two about that because this was magnified in round two against the Carolina Hurricanes, which was if plan A is not working, what's plan B for this team? Look no more than Timo Meyer because – if the goal scoring is not there, if his power play production is not there, he's registering the hits because he made his debut for the Devils, like I just said moments ago, in early March, and he was able to lead the team in 42 hits. So that should say something about his physicality. That should say something about his capabilities. And that should say something about him as a player in general, which is he's a big power forward. So that's how I want Timo Meyer to be utilized. He needs to remain on Jack Hughes' line because he could sort of protect Jack Hughes. And if Hughes is ever in a in a in a snafu, if he's ever double teamed, if teams are giving him the business, then all Hughes has to do, because in addition to his goal scoring abilities, he is also a prolific passer. He knows how to set up his teammates. So all he needs to do is maneuver the puck in front of the net and Timo Meyer can finish because no one's gonna bully Timo Meyer down there. So that's my thing for Timo Meyer. That's how he should be utilized, which is three things. Keep up the hits. Keep up the power play because the Devils ranked 18th in the power play when they first acquired Timo Meyer, and they were able to bump that up to 13th. So I think for Meyer, he played a huge factor as to why the Devils were able to be so successful on the power play down the stretch of the season. And I said it when the Devils acquired Toffoli, which is, Toffoli can certainly help even out just a little bit of the playing field for the power play units for the Devils because the Devils have too much talent on this roster to be a mediocre power play team. Quite honestly, they should be a top 10 team. They, hell, they can even be a top five team if they want to be. So I think Toffoli and Meyer are my X factors for the power play going forward for the Devils. So the three things 
Meyer needs to focus on hits, power play, and be a great dynamic partner with Jack Hughes. That's how I think things should be formulated with Meyer added into the lineup for the next several years. Now, during his press conference, Tom Fitzgerald actually had an interesting thing that he shared, which is despite the Devils adding Tyler to Foley, we've been talking about it the last few days, which is this top six unit for the Devils is stacked because you got Jack Hughes, you got Nico Heischer, you got Jesper Brett, you got Dawson Mercer, you got Timo Meyer, and now you added to Foley to the mix. So a lot of people are saying that this top six team is going to give the rest of the league the business because they are young, they are up and coming, they are budding superstars. But Tom Fitzgerald said that it's not just about having a good top six unit, but you have to have a good unit throughout your lineup. So you got to have a good third line. You got to have a good fourth line. So what I think Fitzgerald was getting at was that if you add someone like Timo Meyer onto the third line, that's going to be a mismatch for most teams throughout the league because a lot of teams don't have a Timo Meyer caliber player on their bottom six. They just don't. So that's why Timo Meyer was put onto the third line. That's why you saw Lindy Ruff switch up the lines a little bit. It's because it spreads out a little bit more. And I just want to reiterate this. And Amanda Stein brought it up just a few months ago, which is just because Meyer is playing on the third line or maybe if he's, if he's ever playing on the fourth line, it doesn't mean he's going to get the least amount of ice time. Your positioning does not determine how much ice time you're going to be playing, just to make that clear. And I agree with Amanda in that regard. But still, if Meyer's playing on the third line, then it's going to be a mismatch for most teams. But I'm still hung on the fact that he should be paired alongside Jack Hughes because we saw some good success of that dynamic partnership working out in round two against the Carolina Hurricanes. In fact, it was one of the few bright spots and Meyer was able to finish the season on a three game point streak because he was able to register two points in the game five loss in which he was able to get a pass to Dawson Mercer. He was able to score himself on the power play later on game four. Meyer was able to uh, get an assist on Jack Hughes's goal. And then in game three, when the devils went super Saiyan and were able to score a plenty full of goals on uh, the hurricanes, we saw Jack Hughes once again setting up Timo Meyer in front of the net and Meyer was able to clean up the mess. And thus the partnership was just working in that regard because Meyer was able to get himself going. He was able to just uh, gain a lot of momentum. And that series was pretty ugly and pretty forgettable. We saw the Devils play their worst brand of hockey in a good while during those uh, five games. But still, one of the minor bright spots was just seeing Timo Meyer, in addition to being physical, just able to get his scoring going once again. So I asked Timo during his press conference, like, has there been any discussion as to which line he'll possibly play on for the most part come next season? Like, we know he has a history with Nico Heischer. They come from the same country of Switzerland. They played on the same national team. And then, obviously, with Jack Hughes, I've been raving about how good that dynamic was in round two of the playoffs. But here's what Timo had to say when I brought it up at his press conference. With the addition of Tyler Toffoli, um, uh, has there been any discussion as to which line you'll potentially play on? Because we know you've had a history with Nico. It seemed like you and Jack were a good dynamic during the playoffs. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the matter. I mean, th those are things, uh, you know, they, they they always change. And, you know, the way Lindy has been coaching, there's been a lot of uh, switching in the lines. And, and I think those are, those are things that are going to um, get worked out during um, the preseason. Um, I'm going to feel, probably going to feel who's going to be with who, but then there's going to be so many switches. So I think that's why, why it's important that you get along with everybody. You can play, you got to be able to play in, uh, on every line with everybody. And uh, yeah, that's so important. Yeah. I didn't really expect that much of a, of a response. I just, I was just curious because obviously these are the discussions that the devil's need to have which is like you have a lot of capable goal getters you have a lot of capable uh lethal shooters on your roster but how are you going to spread it out a little bit because the one thing that this team needs to work on is chemistry i'm not saying their chemistry was bad but like when you have budding superstars and he 
and Hughes, when you have a, a consistent goal scorer like Jesper Bratt on your roster, when you have a dynamic player like Timo Meyer, and obviously when you have a veteran piece like Tyler Toffoli, who's won before, you sort of need to make sure that egos are put aside and you need to try to make sure that that chemistry is there established. So that way you don't just have a cast of A-list celebrities. You actually have a good film that can be nominated for an Oscar. Because just to give that interesting example, which is you can have a bunch of A-list celebrities, but it does not mean the film is going to be good. Because I think a lot of people can think of some examples in that regard. But digressing a little bit, going back to Timo Meyer's press conference, I also asked him, like, what's his ultimate goal, at least this upcoming season? I was trying to see if he would tell me a personal goal that he has in mind for himself. Here's what he told me very vaguely. Now that you're officially here long-term, what are some of the personal goals you've set for yourself, at least for this upcoming season? Well, winning a Stanley Cup, that's that's my goal. I was expecting a little bit better. I don't know if it was the way I phrased the question, but I was hoping for like a personal goal for Timo because winning a Stanley Cup, that's more of a team achievement. I was hoping he would say like, I hope I can do this. I hope I can personally do that. I hope I can approve on this. So my thoughts on Timo Meyer and his utilization, I think he, for what he was given, I think he was able to do just fine. I think he has nowhere to go but up. And like Tom Fitzgerald said in segment two, the, the reason why Timo might have taken like a couple steps back in some other Devils fans' eyes is because, unfortunately, forming chemistry is really hard. And it's something I literally just talked about, which is now uh, how do you make sure that egos are put aside so that way you can actually have this unit work out for the Devils and they can possibly go to the Stanley Cup final. That's going to be a big X factor going forward. And for Timo Meyer, my thing for him is that you have the summer to work things out now that you know that you're coming back for the next few seasons. Uh, try to uh, make sure that you watch film, get into training camp, play in, in those preseason games. So that way you can get a little more comfortable with the dynamic offensive scheme for the devil. So that's my thing. That's my two cent opinion. My goal for Timo Meyer is he needs to be the third goal scorer for the Devils behind Hughes and Heischer. And if he's able to do that, and if he's able to, once again, almost repeat his same success that he had on power play situations last season with the Sharks and Devils, I think he'll be just fine. So those are some of my personal goals for Timo Meyer. Will he score 40 goals come next year? I really don't know. It's going to be hard with Jack Hughes because the thing is, is like, this isn't San Jose. Uh, Timo doesn't need to like get 40 goals in order for the team to win because you already have a 40-goal scorer or someone who's capable of doing so in Jack Hughes. And obviously, you got a facilitator in Nico Heischer. So that is definitely a question mark that I have. Do I think he will do it? I think he's capable, but I don't think it's going to be a priority. So I'm just trying to keep some Devils fans honest in that regard, because the Devils have a lot of scoring options up and down their lineup. And Timo Meyer, in this case, he's not going to be top priority. It's going to be Jack Hughes. So let me know what you guys think about the contract. What do you think about it financially? What do you think about it in terms of its length? And how do you wish Timo Meyer could be utilized going forward? And what are your expectations for him? I'm curious to your guys' thoughts. So if you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal Twitter page at TreyMath4 or the show's Twitter page at LockedOnDevils. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. Curious to your guys' thoughts. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys next episode. Thanks for listening once again.